In this animation, we want to explain how to keep your teeth healthy for as long as possible, maybe for a lifetime. The human jaw commonly has 32 teeth. The visible layer of the teeth is the enamel, which is the hardest substance in the human body. Tooth enamel consists to a large degree of the phosphate hydroxyapatite. The teeth are anchored through cementum, which here appears yellow on the dentin, to the periodontal ligament and the alveolar bone of the jaw. The periodontal ligament in the alveolar bone consists of Sharpie's fibers, which act as a buffer medium against stress when chewing. Nerve tracts and blood vessels, which supply the tooth with nutrients, are located in the pulp cavity. Dentin surrounds the pulp cavity. The most common diseases of the teeth and the periodontium are caries and periodontitis. Let's look at caries first. In the early 20th century, the dentist Weston A. Price traveled the world, comparing traditional with modern diets. The conclusion of his research was that an excess of sugar and white flour in modern diets is probably responsible for tooth decay. Sir Robert McCarrison traveled to India at about the same time and investigated the connection between diet and health. He came to the same conclusion as Price. Our oral cavity is colonized by countless species of bacteria and fungi. They protect teeth and gums, promote good breath and do many other good things. However, if bacteria and fungi become deranged, this situation is called dysbacteriosis. Dysbacteriosis is also called dysbiosis. And it can be caused, for example, by the intake of too much sugar. Some bacteria in our oral cavity feed on sugar, other bacteria do not and then lose out. Bacteria that do not feed on sugar become fewer. Bacteria that love sugar can thrive and grow. One metabolic product of certain bacteria is acid. They turn the sugar into corrosive acid. The acids produced in this way lead to a demineralization of the tooth enamel, that is, a breakdown of calcium and phosphate. Our saliva normally contains many calcium and phosphate ions that initiate remineralization. However, in the case of a dysbiosis, so much demineralization takes place that the enamel cannot be rebuilt quickly enough. This leads to tooth decay or caries. The acid eats its way further and further through the tooth. Eventually, the hole is so deep that the bacteria in the mouth can reach the nerves and blood vessels, damaging and eventually killing them. But are bacteria really the problem? Our digestive tract consists not only of the oral cavity, all of our digestive organs are colonized by countless bacteria and fungi. So, regarding the oral cavity as an isolated region does not seem very helpful. Food that leads to dysbiosis in the mouth will probably lead to dysbiosis in the entire digestive tract. Back to caries. Teeth of mountain gorillas practically never shows caries. However, teeth and tongue show a black coating that comes from the food. The tannins in the plants eaten cover the teeth and the tongue. 
since the food cannot clean the mouth effectively, deposits, heavy tartar and periodontitis develop, which eventually leads to the loss of teeth. On the other hand, the mouth of lowland gorillas does not show this discoloration. They also eat many plants with tenons, but also fruits. Fruits and roots seem to have the ability to clean the oral cavity effectively, because tartar, periodontitis and caries hardly develop either. Wild animals rarely have caries because their food consists of natural, raw products of nature. And we too once ate exactly the same way. We'll see in a moment how we can effectively prevent tooth decay today. But first, let's take a look at periodontitis. Periodontitis is an inflammation of the periodontium. The periodontium includes the gums and the jawbone. At first, injuries occur in some places, usually in the gingival sulcus, and this leads to inflammation. Dead cells and bacterial metabolic processes usually play the main role here. This is initially known as gingivitis. As soon as the gums lose their ability to adhere to the tooth, we speak of periodontitis. It progresses over years and decades. Gum pockets develop. Because bacteria enter the bloodstream, the inflammatory processes also lead to the breakdown of bone tissue. Since the gums are supported by the bone tissue, they follow it. The bone is broken down and the gums recede. The loose cell debris, food particles and more eventually solidify into hard tartar that is difficult, if not impossible, to remove at home. Other negative influences can also be toxic cigarette smoke or food residues that easily get caught in deep gum pockets. Drinks that are too hot or too cold can also damage the gums. The gums are often so damaged that a light touch is enough to cause bleeding. Finally, the periodontium steadily deteriorates so that the tooth can become loose and detached. The tooth wobbles and eventually falls out. Let's now look how we can possibly prevent or at least reduce caries and periodontitis. A good way to prevent tooth decay and periodontitis is to consume natural, raw, low-sugar foods. They can be considered as a natural toothbrush because they gently clean teeth and gums during the chewing process. The toothpaste is made by our body when we chew saliva. Saliva is a pure miracle cure for teeth and gums. It contains antimicrobial components that put an end to certain bacteria. Painkilling components are also found in saliva, as well as many other health-promoting elements. In order for saliva to protect and restore teeth and gums, it is also important to breathe through the nose and not the mouth. Especially at night, as mouth breathing leads to a drying out of the oral cavity. If you have difficulties with this, you can use breathing aids. But there are also many other possibilities, such as changing the sleeping position or surgery. In addition to raw, alkaline food, whole grain products should be preferred to white flour products. Whole grain products use the whole grain, but white flour products use only the carbohydrate-rich endosperm which converts quickly to simple sugars in the body. Many nutrients are found in the bran and the germ, which not only protect gums and teeth. 
This is also true for rice. Natural rice, that is rice with the husk, should be preferred to white rice without the husk. Natural rice has far more nutrients than polished rice. Water, bitter herbal teas or green smoothies with a small amount of fruit should be the preferred drinks. After each meal, the oral cavity should be cleaned of coarse food residues with suitable means. Particularly in the case of deep gum pockets and crooked teeth, food can get stuck between teeth that leads to gingivitis, periodontitis and caries. Interdental brushes and dental floss are often the right choice here. Care must be taken when flossing. Pressing too hard can loosen the gums from the tooth. This should be avoided at all costs. Today, brushing is often done with the phones method. The brush head is moved over the teeth in a circular motion. However, the interdental spaces are only cleaned with difficulty or not at all. Also, it seems that the gingival sulcus and especially deeper gum pockets cannot be cleaned efficiently. The modified BAS technique is more favorable for interdental spaces, the gingival sulcus and pockets, as the bristles are placed at a 45 degree angle. Small jiggling movements in place loosen soft plaque. This is followed by a wiping motion to remove the loosened plaque. It is difficult to perform and takes time. Another method to clean sulcus and pocket is the Phillips blotting method. Phillips developed a special blotting brush for this purpose. The bristles have a special structure and are very soft. However, it is also possible to use very soft natural bristles made of batcher hair, which have a rather irregular structure. The principle is simple. The soft ports, which attack the gums, are removed through dabbing. This is done without any pressure and without any toothpaste. The bristles are simply rinsed with water from time to time to clean them. The brush is placed at a 45 degree angle, similar to the modified BAS technique. Then a very gentle dabbing motion is done. Any pressure should be avoided so as not to damage the gums. The technique is difficult to learn and should be shown by a professional and accompanied by a dentist. Once the bacteria, dead cells and more are removed from a tooth pocket, there is usually a recovery of the gums preventing bacteria from penetrating deep layers. The hard to reach interdental spaces can also be cleaned with the Phillips method using the special blotting brush. A very soft toothbrush, such as the Curaprox Ultra Soft, can also be used. In any case, you should prefer brushes that are soft rather than hard. The bristles are placed at a 45 degree angle to the top. The interdental spaces are then cleaned by lightly dabbing. However, cleaning is done relatively uncontrolled and takes a lot of practice to avoid damaging the gums. Dental floss seems to be more suitable if it is used correctly, because it can be cleaned in a more controlled way. However, one should not be under time pressure and should act carefully, because, as already mentioned, the gums can otherwise be damaged. Regular floss is usually more suitable than floss picks. Interdental brushes are extremely efficient. They clean the interdental space very well when used correctly and at the correct size. They are highly recommended, especially for large interdental spaces. And tough toothbrushes can be used for wisdom teeth that are difficult to access. They can also be used to remove plaque from the gingival sulcus, pockets and interdental spaces. The tongue is home to countless dead cells of the oral cavity, 
and sulfur-producing bacteria, which can cause bad breath, among other things. In particular, the rear part of the tongue should be cleaned with a tongue scraper. Finally, you can clean the cheeks, palate and other parts of the oral cavity, where dead cells of the oral mucosa are also present. There are numerous other tools. How, when and how often they are used depends on diet, the condition of the teeth and one's own behavior. The dentist and relevant literature can help.